Managing multiple Python versions on your system can be a massive pain. That's why in many of my tutorials, you'll see me using a tool called PyENV. This sucker is amazing. You can install multiple Python versions, switch between them with ease. It's <clears throat> my favorite. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install it, how to use it, a few of the bells and whistles, get your coffee ready. Let's go. Unless you want my pinkies out, it's kind of felt right. The first thing you might wonder is why do you need multiple versions of Python? Python being one of my favorite programming languages, the one I'm most familiar with, that's why it's one of my favorites. Wouldn't it make sense just to have the latest and greatest installed? That's what you might be wondering. In a lot of cases, yes, but some projects only support earlier versions of Python. And as you might imagine, as they update Python, they're adding new things. They might be changing some syntax in the way they uh, want you to write these programs. So on your system right now, you might have Python 3.12 installed. That's the latest and greatest version right now, I think. But then you might be playing with a new exciting tool that for some reason was coded in Python 3.10 and suddenly things don't work, you're tearing your hair out and that sucks. What are your options? Well, you could uninstall Python 3.12, reinstall Python as Python 3.10, that's a pain. And that's where Pi ENV comes in. I found this tool like last year. And uh, before then, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was just dying. I've got a link below. Here's the official repo on GitHub for Pi ENV. As promised, Pi ENV lets you easily switch between multiple versions of Python. And what I love about it is you can switch globally saying, you know what, right now, we're all using Python 3.10, or you can do it per project. And the way it does this is actually very clever. It does it with what's called a shim. And uh, you'll, you'll see, it's, it's better to explain it when it actually happens. Now I do use PyENV pretty much everywhere. They have installation instructions for Linux, for Mac OS, and not for Windows. They actually say, no, we don't support Windows, but they do support Windows with WSL, which is essentially Linux. Now over here, you might notice a fresh Linux installation. How do you know it's fresh? Because I just told you. I've done nothing to this, except for the fact that I think it came with, by default, a Python version. We'll do Python 3 dash dash version to see what's inside, and it's Python 3.12.3. Let's change that with PyENV. Let's get PyENV installed right now. On the Linux side of things, you can install with curl. Very easy. On the Mac OS side of things, you'll want to use brew. If you're not using Brew on Mac OS, what are you doing here in this video? <laughs> Go install Brew. It's one of the first things you wanna do when you get a Mac. It's actually very easy. You know, I may make a video about that eventually, so it'll show up here somewhere. But right now, I'm on Linux. I'm gonna grab this command right here. Go over to my terminal here, paste it in, and let the magic happen while I drink some coffee. Well, that was easy. Now, some of the magic that makes PyEMV work is how they add all their stuff to your path. Now, first we do need the PyEMV command in our load path. So when we actually use the command, it's usable. So like right now, if I try to type in PyEMV, it's gonna be like, um, what? <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing? Thankfully, PyEMV has some walkthrough for us just below if we scroll down just a little bit. For bash, all we have to do is enter these commands. This will work for most people. So I'll just copy all of this right here, paste this in my terminal for my bash RC file, and it should already be in there. And then if you have a profile or bash profile, whatever you have, actually you can take a look and, and make sure by doing SL, or I'm sorry, not SL, LS dash ALT. So you can see for me, I have a dot profile. You might have a dot bash profile. For whatever one you have, just copy these commands over here on the left and paste them here. And all of that was for bash. They do have instructions for ZSH and fish. And when I type in PyEMV now, it should just work. There it is. Now at this point, we're almost there, but they do recommend installing what's called Python build dependencies. If we click on that link, it'll take us to a place where we can install those build dependencies. We got Mac OS specific stuff here, usually installed with Xcode. And then just down here, we have Ubuntu, Debian, Mint. And using APT, they'll install all the prerequisites for installing pretty much any other Python version we might encounter. I'll just copy and paste all of that fun stuff. Let it go, time for coffee break. And by the way, this coffee break in the entire video is sponsored by Network Chuck Coffee. Yes, I do have my own coffee brand. Really, it's just for me because because I wanna make sure I'm drinking the best coffee possible. And I partnered with a local roaster here. Actually, he's 10 minutes down the road from me. He sources his beans from farmers that he actually has visited. And when you order my coffee, every bag is fresh. Oh, yes, I do wanna continue. And yes, you do wanna get some networkchuck.coffee. And it is done. So now we can actually start using PyENV. We can first list the versions available to us for Python by typing in PyENV install dash L. And there's a lot. And actually the main Python versions are at the very top here, ranging from 2.1.3 all the way to, oh, we're on 3.14 now. Oh my gosh. So what do you say we install Python 3.10? Good old 3.10.0. To do that, we'll type in PyENV install, and we'll do 3.10. And I think that's all I have to do. Just hit enter and it's going to install Python 3.10. And it's doing the latest 3.10. Notice I didn't specify like a version after that, so it did .16. Now while it's installing, I wanna show you something. I'm gonna open up a new terminal here. And if I echo my path, 
which is where Linux looks to uh, find commands that I enter. Notice that at the very beginning of my path, I've got pi e and v and shims. What's a shim? A shim is just a small piece of code. So for example, when I type in Python 3, Linux is gonna look in my paths to see, okay, where is Python 3 installed? What version are we gonna be using? Normally this would be bound to the one version you have installed in your system, but with pi e and v, that changes the game. Because they put these little code snippets, these shims at the very beginning of your path, that's where it's gonna look first. Python 3 will actually be tied to this. You know, let's take a look at the code. I'm curious if we can uh, get anything from it. Oh, it's a directory. What's in there? Nothing, nothing yet. We're still installing Python 3.10. Okay, it's installed now. And now if I ls that directory, we got a shim. Well, a bunch of shims. Got one for Python 3, Python 3.10. If we were to cat the Python 3 script here, this shim is essentially passing your Python 3 command to pyenv, which will have the logic or the settings that we put in to choose our Python versions. So right now, again, if we still type in Python 3 dash dash version, if you type in version right, it's gonna tell us 3.12. But if I type in pi env, global, changing my global version to 3.10, that setting has changed now. Let's do version once more, <laughs> 3.10, just like that. And global's not the only option. We can do just for our current shell session. We can do it for our current directory. So for example, let's try that. Let's do it, make a new directory. We'll call it testing123. Jump in there. I'll do pi env local 3.12. Oh, we'll need to install it. I'll do it real quick. Pi env install 3.12. All right, with it installed, we'll do pi env global once more, 3.12. Oh, not global, I'm sorry, local. And if we do Python 3, dash dash version 12 here, if we jump back, I've not tested this before, so I'm curious to see what happens. We're out of that directory. <laughs> That's so cool. I love this. And you can even do this. I've never tested this or had a use case for it, but you can have two Python versions set based on whatever you're using. I, I'm really not sure how that works, but that's just magic. Py env itself is magic. I love it. If you've never used it before, try it out, link below. You can also use Py env to set up virtual environments, which I don't normally use. And actually I'm about to change my whole mentality on virtual environments. And I actually may stop using Py env eventually because of this new thing. Now you'll see, but for now, I'm still using this. I love it. Let me know what you think, or if you have better options in the comments below, I'll catch you guys next time.